Saturday, May 30th. It's UFC Fight Night. Woodley versus Burns. We'll show you the main card once more. Again, it's all coming your way live on both ESPN and ESPN Plus uh, at Strawway. Good main card opener here. Mackenzie Dern, a prohibitive betting favorite right now. She takes on the always tough North Carolina native Hannah Cyphers. You got a couple of contenders for these guys who are off to strong starts in the UFC. Roosevelt Roberts taking on Brock Weaver. Kevin Holland and Daniel Rodriguez, as we mentioned, that fight will be at welterweight. Kevin Holland fighting at 170 pounds after the middleweight tilt not all that long ago. Co-main event at heavyweight, one of the toughest dudes on the planet, Bwagwa Ivanov, taking on the streaking Augusto Sakai. And, of course, eventually just a killer main event uh, between the former champ Tyron Woodley and the streaking Gilbert Dorino Burns, the main card, 9 p.m. Eastern, prelims prior at 6, wall-to-wall on ESPN and ESPN+. Plus. All right, with that, we now say hello to ESPN MMA insider and my good friend, Brett Okamoto, making everyone look less handsome every time he does one of these. <laughs> uh, but it's good to see you, my man. How's it going today? Yeah, man. Everything's good. Everything's good. You're a handsome man, too, yourself. It looks like you got that hey. fresh cut up there. Man. Fresh you know. cut, fresh skin fade for the YouTube hit today. We'd have it no other way. The sun uh, down there so in Florida, made... too. The tan looks good. It all looks hey, good. man. Trying to get those miles in outside. You know, trying to keep the lungs clear, right, just in mm -hmm. case COVID-19 bites. So you know how you that go. goes. But uh, so we just heard from Dana White. We talked a little bit about Kevin Holland. I think it's safe to quantify him now as a rising star. This is a huge opportunity for him. And that means the same can be said of his opponent, Daniel Rodriguez. Your thoughts on the matchup coming up here in eight days? Yeah, it's not one that, uh, you know, as I was kind of trying to piece this, this card together, it's not one that I would have guessed, right? I mean, we just saw Kevin Holland, um, you know, down there in, uh, in, in Florida. He picked up a, a quick first round win and really, you know, what do we say about the sport sometimes is that as, as great as all these athletes are and as difficult it is to make it to the UFC, that also means that everybody's good and it's hard to stand out. And so Kevin Holland has done that, man. I mean, he's done that from his very first appearance on the Dana White Contender Series where he was actually making Dana White angry because he was talking too much right. in the octagon, you know, and then he takes a fight against Tiago Santos. He lost that fight. Um, but he, he gave, he put some, he put Tiago Santos in some very perilous positions. And, yeah. and so now, you know, taking a fight again on very, very short notice and actually moving down a weight class on 14 days, very, very interesting. You know, the other two guys that, uh, that have done this in a 13 day, 14 day stretch, they were fighting in the same weight class. Right. So he, he's throwing in a little bit of a, a new challenge where, Hey, not only is he fighting two fights in a span of two weeks, he's doing it in completely different weight classes. So I, I like it. This guy always gives you storylines to talk about, but to your Daniel Rodriguez is a guy who's given us some storylines as well. He came in on short notice and beat Tim Means. And we all right. know how difficult it is to go out there and just beat Tim Means. Yeah. Make it look easy in your UFC debut. He's a guy who uh, he's been training at BMF Ranch for the last couple of weeks, getting some work at, uh, workouts with uh, with Cowboy. He's a, uh, he's a student of Joe Schilling. Obviously, uh, uh, an interesting style matchup there. So I'm looking forward to to this fight. And actual, actually, Daniel Rodriguez has fought in the Apex before, which is kind of interesting. Right. So all these guys who kind of gets used to this new atmosphere, he's fought there before on the on the Contender Series. Right. That's a salient point by you. We'll see how it goes for Kevin Holland. No betting line as yet on that fight because, of course, it has just been announced. Uh, how about Mackenzie Dern taking on Hannah Cyphers? This is also a main card fight. So Dern's second fight since she became a mom last June. She seems to be pretty focused, right, at least from my distance away. Any insight for us on her preparation as she gets ready here for May 30? Yeah, you know, I think uh, I think a lot of eyes have been on Mackenzie Dern, you know, ever since she came into the UFC just because of all the accolades that she has, um, you know, in, in her uh, in her jujitsu ju career. And if there's one knock on, on Mackenzie thus far, it has been what? It's been potentially how committed is she because she's had some problems on the scale she did miss weight a couple times before she came into the ufc and then in one of her fights um not her last one but the one previous to that she missed weight by seven pounds and so that raised a lot of people's eyebrows they said hey what is her commitment level and also is she even in the right weight class well i was talking to her manager actually yesterday and since she uh since she gave birth and became a mom for the first time last year her weight has actually been really low and they don't even know what to attribute that to you know maybe yeah. a change in diet maybe just running around chasing the kid around you've got a few right. so you know what that's like um, but, but her weight has been super low. You know, she used to walk around hundred close to 140 pounds. He told me that she's already in the one twenties. Um, and, and that really shouldn't be too much of a, too much of a cut for her. So if, if those problems are, are gone and we have a committed, healthy Mackenzie Dern that is, is going to make weight is going to step on the scale that, that, that conversation doesn't even come up during fight week. Um, well then you start talking about, well, what's her ceiling at 115 pounds and that conversation becomes really interesting. Right. 
All right, we'll see what she has for Hannah Cypher. She's about a four to one favorite right now, but Hannah uh, certainly can make it for a tough night at the office. We'll see how it goes for Dern. So before we get you out of here with a main event thought, if not prediction, um, I want to get your thoughts on the apex and going back to business in Las Vegas, Nevada, because things really were pretty seamless there in Jacksonville, Florida, doing three shows in eight days. But I'd imagine this is really the perfect scenario for most everyone to be competing in this type of controlled setting in Vegas. Yeah, and John, you and I have talked about this off camera, you know, that as, 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 as positive as your experience was and, and, and everybody else that I spoke to in Florida, how much easier is it in Vegas, man? It's just so much easier. You got the, you got the UFC staff there. They no longer have to travel. You have the apex that was literally built to do this. Right, you know, right. the, the entire thing was built for the, I mean, it wasn't built with a pandemic in mind, but it was built to hold these live events, you know, and you know, as well as I do, when you're, when you're moving around the country, you're moving around the world, you got to set up things, you got to transport things. I mean, it's not just people, it's equipment too. That doesn't have to happen in Vegas. I mean, it is ready to host events on a regular basis right now. You've got, again, Nevada State Athletic Commission does have to approve all this. So we'll see, right. you know, what, what parameters they put on it next week. But depending on what they say and, and some of the rules that the UFC has to follow, they got a kitchen here. They've got full-size right. gyms here. They've got a, a PI here. At that apex where the fights are, there's actually a gym in the back with a full-size octagon. So it really is the, the perfect place to do it. Um, and again, as much as, as, as well as we think, as we all think Florida went, I have reason to think that, that Vegas will just blow it out of the water and make it look that much easier. I think so too. Yeah. Trifecta chef Mario is probably the happiest man in the building to be in the friendly confines of, of Las Vegas, Nevada. All right. I want to get a quick thought on the main event. I know we have Chael Sonnen lurking, waiting in the wings, but this is a fascinating matchup and live underdog has been applied to Gilbert Burns. I think it's appropriate here. Woodley's been pretty good off layoffs in the past. Any final thoughts for us on the main event here coming up in eight days? Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to seed it over to Chael. But one thing I'll say is that I love fights where one guy has, uh, you know, you mentioned to Dana earlier, it's his first main event, you know, and this is a fight that he's been wanting. It's a big opponent. I mean, Tyron Woodley, everything that he stands for, former champion, you know, a guy who was right there in terms of the conversation of the best welterweight ever, you know, that he wanted to be remembered as the best welterweight ever. Gilbert Burns hasn't fought that guy yet. You know, Tyron Woodley has fought a lot of Gilbert Burns in his career, you know, and that's nothing against Gilbert Burns. But, you know, where's the motivation level for Tyron? Where's the motivation level? Because you, you know it's going to be there for Gilbert. So I, I love those types of fights. And, uh, and I, I won't make a prediction, but I, I do think it's, uh, it's going to be a fun fight just in terms of I, I, Tyron Woodley with a chip on his shoulder. Nice. I kind of like it. I kind of like it. I think he's going to have a chip on his shoulder him. coming into this one. Yeah, and the history for him having extended layoffs has been pretty kind. He says he's in a violent headspace, so uh, we'll see if that <laughs> – is something he can parlay into a win. All right, nobody better than you, ESPN MMA insider Brett Okamoto. Appreciate your time. Good to see you, and uh, I guess I'll see you in Vegas shortly, my man. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.